Welcome to Word Pictures, a program of discussion and discovery. We examine the stories, events, and persons as described in the Word Pictures, presented in the 66 books of Scripture we know as the Word of God. But what kind of God is pictured here? By reading these stories, some become fearful, others adore. Yet others are just confused. Come, let us see for ourselves in an unrehearsed, no question barred discussion with people just like you as we search for the God of these stories. What picture of God will emerge for you? Let's join the discussion right now. Welcome to Word Pictures. Today's topic is the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, what do these books teach us? And uh, as today we'll especially be looking at the early years of Jesus. Ken? Yes. The, the usual way we read the Gospels is to read Matthew, and then we more or less see the same story in Mark, and then we more or less read the same story in Luke, and then we go to John, which is quite different. Uh, let's take just a moment and look at these four different versions of the Gospel, of the good news, the story about Jesus. Matthew was apparently written primarily for Jews. However, interestingly enough, and I don't know this because he was originally a, a, a sort of outcast among Jews as a publican, as a tax collector, but he shows in his gospel how the Gentiles responded positively and the Jews responded negatively to the message of Jesus, by and large. There's a lot of that in there. Mark. <clears throat> was written quite a long time, well, both of them were written a long time after Jesus was here, about 30 years after Jesus was here. Uh, Mark is, was written by a young man, Mark, who spent quite a lot of time with Paul and with Peter. Uh, there's pretty good evidence that Mark is actually Peter's gospel, so think about Peter when you read Mark. Mark was written for the Roman audience. The people, they didn't care so much about sermons and philosophy, they wanted to hear action, and so Mark talks about what Jesus did. Luke was, of course, written by a Greek physician who never, ever met Jesus in his entire life, uh, but did a lot of research, as you will discover in the first chapter, the first four verses. And he wants to tell us, okay, a careful, studied approach to the life of Christ. I have done my research. I've talked to lots of witnesses, and here I'm going to tell you the way it really happened. Luke was not re accepted by some in the early church because he was very favorable toward smaller groups, I mean the minority groups. He was very favorable especially toward women and toward marriage. And um, a lot of people in those days were not happy about that. John was written at least, uh, well, about 30 years after the other Gospels was written. Thus it was written for sure after Jerusalem was destroyed, somewhere in the 1890s. And John's message is, the Jews rejected Jesus. He came to his own home and his family rejected him, John 1, 11. And then he goes on to say, but these are the reasons why you should believe in him. So that'll give you just a very brief introduction to some of the things that maybe you didn't know about the gospel writers. Matthew starts out talking a lot about prophecies, about prophecies from the Old Testament that point to Jesus. Have you ever bothered to look up some of those Old Testament prophecies to see uh, what they were originally written to mean? Well, you'll discover that almost universally, not quite, but almost universally, those prophecies had a different application in the Old Testament. Something local, something going on at that time that later was picked up by a gospel writer and said, okay, this applies to Jesus in our day. We have some sophisticated names for that kind of effect, but a kind of uh, result. But basically, think of it in terms of a local application and then a long-term application. And so, you go to Isaiah 7:14, for example, and if you look carefully there and reading Isaiah 7 to 9, you discover that the Messiah, the Emmanuel that was born there, was actually Isaiah's son. And it was born, to, born, obviously, to Isaiah's wife. But when you get over to chapter 9, verse 6, it's clear that the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, wonderful Counselor, those things don't apply to Isaiah's son. 
it's now clearly speaking about the Messiah to come, and so we take that as a prophetic message. Uh, there are many others. Um, some we can't find. Uh, Matthew talks about the prophecy, he shall be called a Nazarene. We have no biblical or extra-biblical books that were written before the times of Jesus that say anything about Jesus being a Nazarene. So we don't know where Matthew got that idea. And then, of course, there's the famous passage in Isaiah 54, I'm sorry, 53, that the Jews feel is a, is a prophecy about the way their people were treated. But Christians say, no, this is clearly a prophecy about the future Messiah and how he will be treated and how he will be uh, eventually offered as, as the, the Lamb of God. So having said that, let's, let's start with the very earliest parts of the gospel story. What's the first thing that happens chronologically? In, in Matthew? Well, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, what's oh. the first thing that happens? List of ancestors. Yeah, and even before that? <coughs> well, I'm getting genealogy. tricky here. What? Mm -hmm. That's a, the genealogy of it. Of course, it says birth. And yeah. But the really first thing that happens is found in John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, beginning was, the, was the Word, and the Word, and my version says, when all things began, the Word already was. So these Gospels take us all the way back before human beings were created. And it starts from there. Uh, Jesus, just to remind us that this Jesus is not something brand new that's happening in the New Testament. He is the God of the Old Testament. And now he's come in person to be the Jesus that we believe was the Messiah, the Christ. Okay, then now, coming back, we have the ancestries, and then what do we have next that happens in the story? By the way, the ancestries, if you notice something interesting, if you turn to Matthew 1, let's look at that for just a moment. It starts from Abraham to King David, and it right, goes down through, and it goes down, you get to the end, you see... Um, there's Abiud, Eliakim, Azor, Zadok, Achim, Eliud, Eliezer, Mathan, Jacob, and Joseph, who married Mary, the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Well, keep your finger in there. If you pop over to Luke 3, you notice something very interesting. Luke 3, and if you see the ancestors of Jesus, they're given in the opposite direction. He starts from, from Jesus and goes back to Adam and then to God. So Luke ties the ancestry of Jesus to all of humanity going back to Adam. Yes. Matthew just does it for the Jews starting with Abraham. But when you start with verse 23 of Luke 3, it says, when Jesus began his work, he was about 30 years old. He was a son, so people thought of, thought of Joseph, who was the son of Heli, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of, none of those names match <laughs> The names in Matthew. Now what do we say? Is this a mistake in the Bible? <coughs> just there's only, I think, I, I haven't counted them recently, but I think there's only 11 names in those whole lists that match. You know, with such a big discrepancy here, it just proves you can't trust the Bible. There you go. <laughs> can't be inspired. Well, I've heard that. <coughs> Anybody have another suggestion? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I've heard that uh, Luke follows the maternal uh, heritage. Yes. Uh, any, any truth to that? Well, it says when Jesus began his work, he was about 30 years old. He was a son, so people thought of Joseph, who was a son of Heli, the son of, and so forth. Mm. So yeah. it sounds like he's talking about Joseph's ancestry. Well, m maybe he's, he's looking at, uh, at Mary, mm -hmm. and who, who were Mary's parents? Well, but it said the Mary's parents over in Matthew is somebody else. But it's still in the line of David. Yeah, they're both in the line of David. See. That's correct. And of course, when he made the prophecy that the scepter wouldn't depart, could mm -hmm. well, occur back there in Genesis, mm -hmm. but yet uh, he was the one, and he says the, the scepter would not depart from David's line. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he is part of that, part of David's line yeah. forever. There is, there is some evidence, some pretty good evidence to suggest that, as Dennis has suggested, the history in Luke is actually the ancestry traced through Mary's family. The one in Matthew is probably traced through Joseph's family. Now you're going to say, but Luke says that this is the son of 
Joseph, the son of you know, so forth and so forth. In New Testament times, if you happen to marry a fam into a family, uh, a, a man marries into a family when they have only one daughter, in order to make an official line of inheritance, they would adopt the son-in-law as their legal son so that they could inherit the property when the parents died. So it's quite likely that that's the story here, that in fact this is Mary's ancestry and where over in Matthew we have Joseph's ancestry. Now Luke would be more likely to trace Mary's ancestry because he was a physician he, and obviously more favorable toward women. Matthew said, no, the traditional Jewish way is to trace through the man, even though Joseph's ancestry has nothing whatsoever to do with Jesus, right? So it's good that both are there because mm -hmm. both lead back to David, which is the yeah. prophecy. And back to Abraham and all the mm -hmm. way back to Adam. Yes. Well, if they went through Joseph um, and Mary was a virgin, wouldn't that be a cutoff right there? Well, I mean, that's the, that's the point. But according to Jewish tradition, according, they would be, okay, because Joseph married Mary, he would be the official father, the official father. Well, that's... <laughs> Yeah, I know what you mean by that, but I think there's a there's a blood point here. Oh yeah, that's yeah. I already mentioned that. Yeah. yeah, and that's why Luke I think traces the story to Mary. Verse twenty three, my version says, as was supposed. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, he was his he was the son. My version says, so people thought. Yeah, yeah. Same, 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 same idea. <laughs> okay, so we've got that, and so then, what happens next? We've got the ancestry. We've got. What about those, you know, Jesus was the only one in the history of our world who had the opportunity to pick his parents. Did you get to pick your parents? No. <laughs> Did you get to pick your parents? No. <laughs> okay. In fact, your parents don't get to pick their kids. <laughs> they don't even get to pick you, right? Okay. Uh, but Jesus picked a very interesting family. Why do you suppose he picked this family? I think it was a blessing. You know, you're referring to the whole, his whole lineage, yeah. and uh, there are a lot of... Um, interesting folks there and <laughs> and and for us okay. I think it gives us you know the ability to say wow if Jesus chose that family he can save us because we're no good we're we're not gods we're not anything like that there's no possible way for us to what, be what saved you, but yet Jesus refer? loves all these people well Tamar to Rahab the prostitute who's a hero of the Bible and uh, they're all in Jesus' lineage. I mean, Tamar was a one-time prostitute. Rahab was the official full-time prostitute for a while. Uh, Ruth was from the, from the descendants of Lot, who were supposed to not have anything to do with the children of Israel for 10 generations. Bathsheba got into the act by committing adultery with David. I mean, this is a very... And, you know, the, think about this. There was no reason why you had to mention these women's names. And if you go back to the Old Testament, you'll find out that these women are, I mean, they could have easily been left out of the story. They were not. I mean, there's a whole chapter, there's a whole book just dedicated to the story of these women. It could have been just left out. The story would be fine without it. Why did God include all of that? Well, couldn't, couldn't it, all, although we, we make uh, a bit of an issue out of it, those nefarious characters and so on. Couldn't it, <laughs> couldn't it, couldn't it be argued that you know, no matter what line he came from, you have got that many people in there. You're gonna there was going to be some some nefarious people in there. Okay, but but it is in, you, but, it, but it is, is you, it is interesting that those people. Um, they're not left out of the Old Testament. They are, they are prominent, specifically mentioned. Right. In the, in the Old Testament. And whole chapters in the Bible are dedicated to them. Yes? Uh, none, of, none of us could say that Jesus had certain advantages that we never had, or a certain perfect family background that gave him a better chance. But to didn't succeed. he have a whole bunch of kings in his lineage? That could be a problem <laughs> if you were the kings. <laughs> could be and, those kings, huh? Then the other comment is, you know, in the time period that Jesus was born, Women and any foreigner, Gentile, they were totally of no value to the mm. Jewish people. Here is God saying, I value these women. 
they weren't perfect. They were Gentiles. Mm -hmm. They were colorful. I still <laughs> value them. Yes. Okay. Very God, good. God and humanity. That this was the original reality show. Mm -hmm. okay. And and it's all there. Yeah, Dennis. That doesn't it also say that that this is is not a a stylized history. That there's something something real about very this very real about this story. Yeah, very much so. And it's it's not just composed here by Matthew. This is this is a two and three thousand year history. History. Just continuous all here. Yeah. Hasn't anyone besides me ever done a family tree and discovered things you wish you hadn't known <laughs> and you kind of <laughs> lost that information? <laughs> yeah, and always looking for for something better and That's finding right. something worse. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, the next thing we find out that happens in our story is the angel of God, apparently Gabriel, he's mentioned once or twice by name, appears to a teenage girl and says, I know you're not married yet, but you're going to have a son. Is that the way, if you were God, is that the way you would start out? I don't think so. <coughs> that's uh, that's uh, uh, leave, leaves too much room for accusation. Uh huh. And they cer certainly Jesus lived with it. I mean, there's men. I mean, they were making fun of him. The people who knew were making fun of him for the rest of his life. Well, what what option was there? What other what other course of action could go? Well, what the Jews expected. <laughs> if you look into Jewish mythology, if you will. What they expected is Jesus is going to miraculously appear, miraculously appear someday as a shining knight in white armor, probably, standing on the pinnacle above the temple. He was going to descend on the temple grounds. He was going to lead the armies of Israel to conquer the world. That's what they expected. They did not expect... Now, I don't know what they ever did with Micah 5, 2, which says he's going to be born of Bethlehem. But in general, they didn't, they didn't think at all about his being born and raised, except and, that he needed to be a descendant of David. And earlier you had mentioned the book of Isaiah chapter 9 mm -hmm. about the baby who will be called Everlasting Father. So <coughs> obviously there's a baby in this story mm -hmm. and the baby is the Savior. So if people missed it, they've got their chance now. Find him and, and come to the Lord. Yeah. Do, but it's still miraculous. Mm -hmm. oh. It's just that it's not as sens sensational well, as that. And, and you know, this is one of the things that the critics have just, I mean, there are relatively few, even of Christians today, who, who are fully convinced of the immaculate, con well, not the immaculate conception, of the miraculous virgin birth of Jesus. You know, they make movies and they have all sorts of hanky-panky going on and so forth. The interesting thing is we can do uh, test tube babies, artificial insemination, et cetera, et cetera, and and we don't have enough faith to believe God could do it one time. You know, the, this 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 is a little a little frightening in a way, in that um, here you have the Messiah, which is predicted, and when he gets here, people are confused because they've got an idea about how he is supposed to come, and he doesn't come that way. And most Christians today look for the Messiah to come again. And as one of those people, you know, sometimes I wonder, well, I wonder if I have it straight. Maybe he's not going to show up exactly the way we expect. Right, yeah. yeah. How, why is it, is it any less, uh, 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 any, any more difficult, any easier for me to figure it out? Mm -hmm than it was was for them. Do we have it figured out today? Good question. Go ahead. The thing about the background and the birth, there was nothing there that you would be drawn to because of its glory or its honor or its prestige or sitting on a throne on the top of the temple. There was nothing there. You would either be drawn to the pure truth about God of the <coughs> gospel or you wouldn't. Mm -hmm which is what God wanted, people that came, people that believed for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Well, moving on to the story, you know that Joseph and Mary went down to Bethlehem because it was time to be registered to pay your taxes, etc. And uh, down there, of course, Mary delivered in a manger. Nothing, there was no room except the cattle stall. And baby was born or laid in that little feed trough that was supposed to be for cows. Um, but sometime in the next little while, uh, what groups recognized him? You mean when he was born? W well, or shortly after. The, the Magi. The okay, the Magi probably came w before too long, probably not the night he was born. Um, where did they come from? Uh, the East, mm -hmm. probably. Wise men from the East came looking for Jesus, okay? And they stopped in Jerusalem? Yes. And what did they do in Jerusalem? They inquired, thinking that uh, the scholars, the king, everyone would know this information. Be they all stopped excited by about and, it, right? and asked, uh, which way are we close? Uh, they have where can reading. we find this? They had been reading the New Testament more closely than the Jewish people had. The Old Testament. The Old Testament, excuse yeah. me, the well, Old Testament. Well, well, that brings up it was yeah it was new <laughs> it was the New Testament for them <laughs> at that time. Yeah. Well, it it's, uh, brings up an interesting question: What is it in the Old Testament or anywhere that would uh, prophesy his birth? Was Balaam's prophecy? Believe it or not, it was the prophecy of Balaam. Balaam came from the same area. You can go back and read about Balaam in, in, near the end of the chap of, of the Book of Numbers, and he was. He was so greedy for money that he ended up being killed in fighting against the Israelites. But he tried several times to curse the Israelites because he was war awarded a huge amount of money, but he was a prophet of God, and, and this is a really mixed up story, but apparently <laughs> his prophecy was enough to tip off these wise men that something was coming. Well, what was it he said? I mean, when we go to Daniel, we, we, we know when his his uh, mission was to start. We know when he was to die uh, and all of that, but it doesn't give us his age at that time. Mm -hmm. So, so wh what was it that, 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 that sent the, the Magi there uh, at, at, at that time? And what, what, was, what was, was Balaam in the east when he did this? Well, he they, came they, from the east. They saw, a, they saw a star, though, but it mm -hmm. wasn't really a star. Mm -hmm. It was probably kind of an odd thing because it probably didn't move with the stars. It was a if shiny tried, angel. Well, it didn't. If you couldn't move with the stars, otherwise you'd never get anywhere. Yeah, You'd be walking half half the night one direction and half the, back the other direction the other half the so night. So that's got to be really odd. If you saw that, you're going to be looking all over the place to try to identify it. Could okay. you say that the first group that actually recognized the infant child were the angels? Yes, and, and who did they speak to? The shepherds. shepherds. The shepherds. And they apparently hap arrived this, the night Jesus was born. They were the ones, the first ones and to come. Interestingly enough, the shepherds would be considered perhaps to be just common, yeah, very, very common, common yes. folks. So the Lord is announced to the, the common folks first. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I wonder if it's scared the eebie-jeebies out of them when that <laughs> uh, the happened shepherds? all over. Yeah, yeah, when exactly. The, when the sky all lit up and that big choir and whatever it was, yeah. probably kind of shook everything. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly. Uh, and then when the when the uh, well, let's talk about what happens next. One of the parts of the story that's just barely, barely mentioned is what's supposed to happen, what happened to Jesus at, at age seven days or eight days? Circumcision. circumcision. He was circumcised. At 40 days he was taken to the temple and dedicated at the temple. And probably shortly thereafter the wise men showed up because it's very unlikely that you know, they, they came and Herod knew what was going on and you can guarantee when Herod found out about it, he probably acted very quickly to wipe out these babies. So very shortly after the wise men showed up with their gifts, Joseph and Mary escaped and probably almost certainly not via Jerusalem, they escaped down to, down to Egypt, right? That's not the way the Christmas pageant shows it. 
I'm you sorry. Up. We're trying to we're trying to talk about reality. Show up with the manger, and you're telling me that the magi didn't show up that night. How about three of them? Were there three of them, or we don't know for sure. The only reason we think three is because there's three gifts mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the only basis on which we think there's three. Yeah. So. Were Joseph, Mary, and the baby, let's say after 40 days he was dedicated and then the Magi show up, so were they actually in Jerusalem when the Magi well, showed they went up? To no, they went to Jerusalem, and now I'm, I'm stepping outside of the Bible a little bit. Um, Ellen White, that I trust, said that Joseph went back. Well, even the Bible says that. I guess I don't really need to go to Ellen White. Jo when Joseph came back from Egypt, he went to Bethlehem because he assumed, okay, this child is the descendant of David. He's supposed to grow up in Bethlehem, right? So he went back and tried to find a place to work in Bethlehem, but then he realized Archelaus was this very, very cruel, very awful, awful son of King Herod. And he said, man, if King Herod has already wiped out all the male babies in this area, our baby is going to stand a lot like a sore thumb. He's the only male baby around at that age. This is not a good place for us. And they said, move on, and they went to Nazareth. So it's very likely that Joseph stayed in Bethlehem. I mean, it's a shirt. I, I, I'm 100% sure they stayed in Bethlehem with the intention, of thinking they would settle down there and live there. So, yeah. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, were the gifts that the three wise men brought, or the whatever number of wise men who came, did those gifts have any special meaning? Probably not special meaning. They, Why they did were, they bring those gifts? They were valuable gifts, and they were obviously brought from the East where they would be valued more, and brought here is, is considered to be a, a valuable kind of trading item. And it's almost certain that these gifts were used to pay for travel for Joseph and Mary and the baby down to Egypt and perhaps even supported them during the time they were down there. Mm. However, in light of that, we need to understand that what was going on in Egypt at that point in time. Mm. Anybody? There were more Jews living in Egypt in those days than there were living in Palestine. A great number of Jews had moved to Egypt back in the days when there was all the warring and so forth going on in Palestine. In fact, Jeremiah was taken down there, and, and Baruch, were, in, in their day, were forced to go down to Egypt, and they died down there. So there were huge masses of people, of Jews, living down in Egypt, and so it was easy for Joseph and Mary and, and baby Jesus to just sort of blend in there, uh, down in Egypt, very comfortably, because there were so many other Jews already there. Was Egypt a peaceful country then? They, At they, that point they, in time, yes. So they left the war-torn area and went to a peaceful well, country. Well, yeah. The time they left the war-torn area was back in the days, well, last three or four hundred, six hundred years before mm -hmm. that. They had just been moving. And, and by the time of Jesus' day, Alexandria was, was the second largest city in the Roman Empire, so be, a lot of people would be moving down there just for business reasons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so if God can come and uh, answer my question after the break. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if the God will come and answer your question, but we do need to take a break. So don't forget your question. We're trying to trace through history as the best we understand it of what actually happened with the early days of Jesus. So there's a lot more to come. Don't go away. away. We'll be right back.
We're so glad you decided to stay by. We're working on the genealogy and the history, the childhood, the infancy of Jesus. And Jay, you said you were about to give us a question. Well, I was, I was going to ask if God can come and give Joseph uh, and Mary a direction saying, you know, it's dangerous here, you need to get down to Egypt. Uh, you mentioned that he then Joseph went to Bethlehem thinking it would settle down in there and then and probably had to get out of there and, and go to Nazareth. Why, did, why didn't God tell, tell Joseph, well, you, you know, don't go back to Bethlehem, go to, go to Nazareth? Why, why did we get I mean, the some information yeah. and yet, yet left yeah. the rest of the time why, we have to figure it out ourselves? Why didn't God tell the Magi to skip Jerusalem? <clears throat> I mean, think about that. Uh, lots and lots of baby boys died because they went via Jerusalem. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Well, it does call attention to the event. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, if you were living in that part of the world, if you were living around Bethlehem, and all of the children, all of the, 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 the boy the babies, boys, babies were, were slaughtered, uh, you'd want to know why. You'd want to know what was going on. And... Uh, uh, without television and uh, multimedia marketing, uh, that that got attention. Oh yeah, it was kind of a repeat from what happened the Moses time, wasn't mm -hmm. it? When Moses was born. Yeah, so they, which gives us a see. clue about why it happened. Who do you suppose was behind all of that? Well, same person. Yes, the devil, clearly. If you think about it from the devil's side. There were several times in history where he thought, I'm just that close. I mean, look at the flood. There was one family left. In the days of Abraham, there's apparently one family still worshiping God. We come down, you know, to the this, this story down in Egypt. The children of Israel have been in Egypt so long, they basically have adopted Egyptian customs and, and all that kind of stuff. And the, the, the devil says, okay, if I can just wipe out the baby boys here, the, the girls will have to marry Egyptian boys and they will have to adopt the Egyptian religion and I will win this great controversy. And God upset the apple cart and started over again. The devil, I, the devil I'm sure he was furious at what happened on each of those occasions. And here's another one. Now he says, okay, he's, he's got the, the Sarah Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Essenes and others of those times wrapped around his finger. They're, they're off doing things that have nothing to do with worshiping God whatsoever. And what happens? Jesus shows up. You know, it, it could be argued that um, these three kings from a foreign country showing up at uh, the local king's doorstep could have been God's way of, of cluing these people and cluing this king in that, you know, uh, there's something you ought to take, pay attention to here. Uh, the next question, another question would be, I mean, these guys are following this, this star. Um, well, how did they end up at, at Herod's doorstep here That's if they're following the star? What happened to the star? And then, and then once so they left Herod, how did they find out where the baby was? They followed the star again. And what's this star doing? You know, that's, <laughs> well, that's the point. Doesn't that seem the, kind of strange? The, 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 the only explanation for that star is that it's a group of distant group of angels shining brightly leading them there's, and, there's, but, 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 but the question be why in the, then yeah. why did it lead it over here to Herod well, that's my, all this havoc and now it's going to lead them that's ex that was the question I asked you a moment ago yeah it doesn't oh, I'm reinforcing and, and, and your, Dennis's Dennis's answer is the only reasonable one I could think it's a way for God to call attention to the fact that something is happening maybe uh, if the wise men would have followed the star they wouldn't have needed to visit the powers that be, but maybe they decided in their human mind to go visit the powers that be. Pull, pull of the big city. Mm -hmm. and then <laughs> now, some, when, surely when, somebody in, in Jerusalem will know mm -hmm. about the Jewish king. Yeah, yeah. When, when are you, what, what is the time frame these, uh, these Magi are showing up after the birth? Uh, well, he went to the temple and was dedicated mm -hmm. at, at 40 days of age. We know that they went to, he went down to Egypt not too long after that. It's likely that after that experience, that shortly thereafter, the Magi showed up, gave their gifts. They used the money from the gifts to pay for the expenses of so, the trip. So then the Magi are not showing up back at the stable. They're not showing up back at the stable. Like in the 
panoramas at Christmas time. Yeah. No. <laughs> don't, you, don't you think your um, question is very similar to those who ask why God allows all the suffering in the earth? Sure. It's very, very close to that in the long run. They're, mm -hmm. they're kind of the same reasons. Mm -hmm. I've, yeah. I've got a question. Recently, and I don't remember exactly where it was, I read that there was no record anywhere being found so far, unless you know of something, what we're told in the Bible, they had the edict went out, they went to the town of their birth for tax. Mm. No record was what I read. I've never seen that before. Have you ever heard that? Before? About the tax? That that edict that went forth that mm. made them do it. They said there's no record. And I'm thinking Yes, there is. The, <laughs> there is a record of the edict. No question about that. The difficulty is it's it's uh, it's a, it appears to be at the wrong date. Okay. And so they're trying, to, the explanation is, it was actually given, if I remember the details now, because I wasn't quite expecting this question, I think the edict was given either at 6 AD or, or, or maybe 8 AD or something, I mean BC, I'm sorry, 6, 8 BC or 6 BC, but there was a period of time that you were allowed to come and do it, and then there was a deadline and so forth like this. And so, and then there were certain places that didn't have to do it until later, so it's assumed that this is what happened and why. Because Jesus apparently was born maybe at the end of AD 5, I, I keep saying say AD, BC. at the end of BC 5, beginning of BC 4, somewhere there uh, approximately. Okay, I'd never seen or heard yeah. of any thought of that. And I thought, boy, that is interesting. You know? Yeah, there are many things that sometimes we don't hear about or there's some casting some doubt, hey, Where's Pontius Pilate in, in the record and everything? But, you know, eventually we find, we discover yeah. something, and they found his name in a, yeah. in a floor mosaic or something like that by some a, steps. A, yeah, it was, yeah, it was on a thing that's fallen down. They're not sure. I don't think they know exactly where it was, but it's very clearly his name is right there, carved in a, in marble, a piece of marble. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that Jesus would come when the time was right. full or right, uh, what was special about the time that uh, he came? That's a very, very good question. And why did it take so long for the time to be just right? The people you have been waiting 4,000 years for this yeah. thing. Perhaps. And now we wait another 2,000. Yeah. Yeah. You know, In the fullness of time. Perhaps you know right before the destruction of Jerusalem was one mm -hmm. of the timings. Yeah. But of course that could have been... Mm, that happened Speed it up or times. happened later, presumably, at God's direction. Well, if he didn't come about that time, Daniel would have been uh, discredited. <laughs> <laughs> well, but of course, if God foreknew, he could make Daniel, he could adjust Daniel's prophecy, couldn't he? Yeah, but, but uh, not after the fact, could he? Not after the fact, no. <laughs> no, not after. Oh, I see. So he so came, he came to, at the right he time. He came and chatted with Daniel, so now he's stuck. No, 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 no. <laughs> There's one other thing that I, I thought of, that they were dirt poor. It was not winter time. Mm -hmm. So if you had to be born in the open, you had a chance of survival in a stable, with the way you envision yeah. it. There's not too much but shelter. Th there's actually a good explanation, I think, to Jay's question, but it's a very valid question. And let's see if we can work our way through that. In the Old Testament, we see people flagrantly violating the commandments, worshiping all kinds of strange gods, idols, practicing prostitution, you know, all that kind of stuff that's, that's clearly portrayed in the Old and Testament. And not just the bad people, this is God's people. These are, read Hosea. I mean, it was... And Jeremiah. And Jeremiah, it was, it was rampant all the way through. So God, it, God had a chance to say, okay, this is what happens when I try to work with a group of people who are on that side, in the, in the ditch on that side of the road, if you will, okay? Then over the period of time between the Old Testament and the New Testament, following the Babylonian captivity, a group came back and Ezra and Nehemiah said, so help us, we are going to obey God's will if it kills us. And they started making very strict rules, and they closed the gates on Sabbath, and they locked it. And they said, if you come here on Sabbath and try to sell your goods, we'll tear out your hair. And I mean, <laughs> boy, and it became very, very strict. And, and even though at the beginning, when they first came back from Babylonian captivity, they were busy marrying women from the other tribes around, and they were introducing all these things and so forth. They were ready to go right back to the same, problem, same sins that had caused the downfall of Israel to start out with. But 
Instead, they shifted to this very conservative approach. And by the time Jesus comes along, there's the Pharisees, particularly the scribes, and they had multiplied rules that you all know about, hundreds of rules about how to keep the Sabbath. You had to be almost independently wealthy to be able just to, to try to follow all the rules. You, you, couldn't, you couldn't have an ordinary job and follow all the rules. You need to be able to be super strict, and, and the Essenes went even a level beyond that. They were down there in the Dead Sea area. They moved away from the temple. I said, those people at the temple are, are desecrating things so bad that we can't even worship there. We have to go and establish our own place down by the Dead Sea. And so here were these very, very conservative, very strict people who believed that they were doing everything, and they believed that they were descendants of Abraham, and they basically were just waiting for the Messiah to come because they were on the inside track. And God said, okay, now I've had people on that side of the road. Now I've got people on this side of the road. Let me send my son and see what happens. And what we discover is these people who believed that they were absolutely dedicated to worshiping the true God were the ones who were out there crucifying God. Mm. That says something really, really important about how we worship God. There are ditches just as deep on both sides of the road. Dennis. But can't we say that, that God has been trying to reveal himself oh, yeah. to his people? He had been revealing himself. Uh, all the way back to the Garden of Eden, that there was a discourse that went on between Satan and Eve, um, and it's 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 come down over uh, the the character and government of God. Mm -hmm. So God t uh, chose Abraham and his descendants, I think, as a favor to Abraham, mm -hmm. to select his prophets from that family, mm -hmm. trying to reveal himself, tell his side of the story. And uh, like you described, they, they run off the road in either direction so badly that when when God does send his son, when God does come in person, they hate him. Yeah. Well, we're going to discover when we get to the, the death of Christ that three things happen, and I don't have time to, we, we'll talk about this a lot later, but there's some questions that needed to be answered in the great controversy context, and there are three of them. The first one, does sin lead to death? Remember, that was the argument back in Genesis 2 and 3. God says, yes, sin leads to death. If you sin, you will die. Satan said, no, you won't die. So did Jesus really die? Absolutely, and he died the death that's a result of sin. Then the devil said, well, yeah, but the reason people die when they're sinners is not because of there's anything wrong with sin. The problem is that God is killing them. And you look at the story, was God killing Jesus? No, Jesus said, what? Why have you forsaken me? God wasn't there killing Jesus. He said, why have you forsaken me? But there's a third question that many people don't recognize. It's one I just talked about for a moment ago. Suppose you misunderstand all of God's directions. You worship him out of fear, and you're determined to do right no matter if it kills you, and you're following all these rules and things like this. And the result is you end up out there with the Pharisees killing God, thinking you're doing it in God's name. Those are really, really important messages to get from the life and death of Jesus. You know, are these just the result of sin? I was thinking, sin that makes you go conservative to the right, like uh, having excess rules. Isn't that the sin of pride? Mm -hmm. or, and the people who are sinning on the way of looseness, is that the joy of the eye and the flesh? And mm -hmm. so... It is sin that gets us every time. Mm -hmm. Sin, even when we're trying to do good, sin will lead us into bad kind of good. Yeah. So now let's go back to the story of Jesus because that's what we're supposed to be covering now. So what happens next? They have come back from Egypt. They decide it's not safe to live in Bethlehem. Where do they go? Nazareth. 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 What do we know about Nazareth? Pretty rough town. Pretty rough town. Everybody says, Nazareth? Can anything, anything good come out of Nazareth? Why do you suppose 
Joseph and Mary decide to go to Nazareth. Well, I don't know why they decide to go there, mm -hmm. but isn't Nazareth close to the Decapolis, the Roman city, Roman headquarters, and they were sort of a service community to the Romans? Well, you, you got the story a little bit mixed up, but you got uh, the right that's, idea. That's, that's, that's <laughs> always the case. The, Decap <laughs> the Decapolis was on the other side of Galilee. It was on the other side of the Jordan River. They were west of the Jordan River, but they were, they were very, uh, Nazareth is a little mountain village. It's about two miles or so from Sephoris. And Sephoris was a brand new Roman city that Herod was building and with, in cooperation with the Romans to, to try to you know, build up the Roman emphasis and the Roman hegemony in the area to, to show that they were, they were bosses, basically. And so there was an enormous amount of construction going on there. And so where would a carpenter go? Where the work is. Mm -hmm. Where the work yes. is. <clears throat> well, sure. In Nazareth, were there Jews there? Was it a Jewish oh, yeah. city? Oh, yeah. Nazareth was a Jewish city. But it was just a corrupt city. Yeah. Yeah. Very, well, very close to the Roman city, the new Roman city. Is it that it was corrupt or that it was identified with, with helping the Romans? That's possible. And, and so you, you could have been as, as, as saintly as, 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 as white as snow, mm -hmm. but if you were helping the Romans, yeah. uh, you, you were castigated. Yeah, that's also possible. Yeah. So what do we know about the next 12 years of the life of Jesus? Not much. Nothing. Basically nothing. We do know a little bit about his family. What do we know about the rest of the family? I have a question. Go ahead. Um, did the Jews not like to be entrepreneurs and businessmen? Oh, they loved did, it. Did they not deal with the Romans and whoever they were around and make money off of them? Some did. So I don't think that would be a shameful activity because they were into building businesses and making money and they would have to serve the people that were around them and they didn't say, you're Jewish and so I can build for you, uh, but you're not Jewish. Except kind of the Romans were like the overlord. Yeah. So yeah. they felt, but they, but they just they felt make, if they you could know, make money oppressed. off of them, did they? Sure, sure, they, sure, they would. Tax collectors make money too. Right, everybody's if making money. Tax collectors, you could you could say they fit your criterion too, but they were hated. So there was nothing better than the worse than a tax collector. We we can conclude conclude from the next big story that those twelve years Jesus must have been getting some education, must have been and getting what, some school. Okay, and let's let's talk about that. He grew up in a home, but first of all, let's 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 talk about his family. Do we know anything? Was it just Joseph and, and Mary and Jesus, or was there more? Yes, they're brothers and sisters, or half brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters. Where where do you read about those? Look at Matthew thirteen, Matthew thirteen, and the, you can read this also in Mark six. But Matthew thirteen, uh, when Jesus came back to Nazareth, we read these verses. Um, and he went back to his hometown. He taught in the synagogue, and those who heard him were amazed. Where did he get such wisdom, they asked. And what about his miracles? Isn't he the carpenter's son? That would be, of course, Joseph. Isn't Mary his mother? That is, of course, talking about Mary. Aren't James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas his brothers? Aren't all his sisters living here? Where did he get all this? And so they rejected him. So if the odds play out, sisters, we don't, doesn't mention the sisters by name, if the typical odds, there would be four girls as well as four boys. Jesus had eight older siblings. So Mary must not have been a virgin then. No, 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 no. Uh, okay. Matthew one twenty-five. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so don't he no, said no, that for a purpose. Right. <laughs> no, so, no, Mary until after or, or the birth his, of Jesus. His brothers yes. and sisters were younger. They were probably half brothers. No. Yeah. yeah, no, they were. They no, were not even half brothers. But they, now some were, churches teach yeah. that Mary just remained a virgin her whole life. And so what was, what is that Matthew verse? 1 verse 25, oh. and he knew her not until she had born a son and called his name Jesus. Yeah. So the, there's a lot of evidence and uh, this is, well, I don't know, maybe we should talk about it a little bit. If you that, understand Oriental that custom. The passage you just read, that's easily slipped, that can easily slip by. What it mm -hmm. infers is that he did 
in the biblical sense, eventually know her, yes. right. which was have sexual relations. So yes. the, what that little little blip of a passage there says is that is that uh, they were they, 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 husband they, and wife. That is correct. They had um, conducted themselves accordingly. Right. Yeah. But, but, but let, let's, let's understand something. In, in biblical or well, oriental custom from the Middle East, youth always respects, even if you're a little bit older, someone else is a little bit older for, than you are, you are ex expected to respect them and, if necessary, obey them. And we see several passages, and again, I'm not going to take time to go there right now. We see several passages where Jesus' brothers tried to command him what he should do. That suggests that they were older than he was. Furthermore, when we come to the crucifixion, Jesus says to John, he says, take care of your mother. And he says to Mary, okay, this is your son. Now, if the, all these other brothers and sisters were children of Mary's, then they should have been responsible for Mary it's very unlikely that they were children of Mary's. It's quite possible that John was a cousin of Jesus. So it's not like he was some stranger that she didn't have any knowledge about. It's very likely that he was a cousin of Jesus, so it was almost within the family. Jesus says, take care of her. So these other brothers and sisters, by the way, do we hear anything more about these other brothers and sisters? James. James. One became a disciple or... or One? Only one? one was but these Jude other brothers and the, these other brothers and sisters then were um, Mary's, were Jesus' stepbrothers and sisters, mm -hmm. you're saying? So when, when Joseph came along, it would be reasonable to conclude that he had children himself. Yeah, yeah. He, he, had, he had these eight kids, or how many kids they were, already. Apparently he had been married, must have lost his, his wife, and he married a, a young teenage girl. They were the only ones that were available. That probably was only a year or two or three, few years anyway, older than his oldest child. And James is mentioned first, so he was probably the oldest son of Joseph, probably almost as old as Mary was when Joseph married Mary. Well, look at this interesting verse. It's found in Acts 1. It's talking about what happened after the res... Well, after basically after Jesus was taken up to heaven. It says, Then the apostles went Acts, back to... Acts 1, 1. Acts 1, I'm going to start with 12. Then the apostles went back to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is about half a mile away from the city. They entered the city and went up to the room where they were staying, Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, da, da, the whole dis group of disciples. They gathered frequently to pray as a group, to pray as a group, together with the women and with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Hmm. So for some reason, at the time of the crucifixion, they suddenly decided that Jesus was genuine. Mm -hmm. Something happened there. We don't know exactly what. But from then on, they became followers. And the James who wrote the book of James and the, Jude who wrote the, the Judas who wrote the book of Jude, almost certainly, well, I mean, there's very good evidence that they are the, brother, the older brothers of Jesus. Oh, two of them. Two of them. What books of the Bible? Yeah. They didn't say anything about the childhood of Jesus. That's really too bad. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have Jesus in Nazareth. We have an idea why his father is there. We have an idea what's going on with his family. Where do we go next? <coughs> go to the temple. Okay, at age 12, according to the time for his bar mitzvah, Jesus had become a son of the law. By the way, how, how did he get his education? Let's... let's, let's Touch on that one first. He was How did he get his education? Schooled? Homeschooled. <laughs> homeschooled. Where did you get that idea? I think you told us. <laughs> <laughs> now you better you better, you better have a more authority for it than that. I think Mary had something to do it in his very early life. Uh huh. The fact that he was used to going to the synagogue, somebody got him going somewhere, or they coached him, mm -hmm. or Joseph had a little more cash than we give him credit for to get somebody to come in. There's several ways you can look at that. Wasn't there a statement by somebody that he not he didn't actually go to school anywhere? 
And that's well, why was he so I, important? At the temple, you know? they were amazed at his, at the amount of knowledge he had, yeah. based on the fact that he, they were assuming that he hadn't, they didn't know that he'd been to school. Let, let me read you a few words from Ellen White. The child Jesus, this is Desire of Ages, starting on page 70, the first paragraph. The child Jesus did not receive instruction in the synagogue schools. His mother was his first human teacher. From her lips and from the scrolls of the prophets, he learned of heavenly things. The very words which he himself had spoken to Moses for Israel, where he was now taught at his mother's knee. Imagine that. Those scrolls. Mm -hmm. I mean, scrolls are not cheap. No. How did they have access to that's, them? That was a, that's a good question. Yeah. As he advanced from childhood to youth, he did not seek the schools of the rabbis. He needed not the education to be obtained from such sources, for God was his instructor. How does, what does that imply? Thus to Jesus, the significance of the word and the works of God was unfolded. As he was trying to understand the reason of things, heavenly beings were his attendants, and the culture of holy thoughts and communings was his. Angels also instructed him. From oh. the first dawn of Physically. Showed up in the middle of the night. I don't, From the first I, dawning I don't of think you get that. I mean, I, I wouldn't say physically. Well, if you read the whole passage, it said he would go out into the valley, hills and valleys very early in the morning, and Still, God would be his instructor. Why couldn't he? Still. I, I know. Yeah, because, because Ellen White even said that uh, the angels were her instructor on a few items, didn't she? And I read on, every <laughs> child may gain knowledge as Jesus did. He was subject to all the conflicts which, which we have to meet, that he might be an example to us in childhood, youth, and manhood. Satan was unwearied in his efforts to overcome the child of Nazareth. From his earliest years, Jesus was guarded by heavenly angels, yet his life was one long struggle against the powers of darkness. That there should be upon the earth one life Free from the defilement of evil was an offense and a perplexity to the prince of darkness. He left no means untried to ensnare Jesus. No child of humanity will ever be called to live a holy life amid so fierce a conflict with the temptation as was our Savior. So that's how he got his education. And we're going to have to stop there. We'll pick up this next week. We'll talk about where it went when he was 12. See you then.